came from singing Bob Dylan and John Baez. And I was also playing a lot of guitar, a lot of folk, a lot of French traditional folk music, a lot of uh, Irish music, music from Brittany, from Scotland. And at the end of the day, everything had a sort of a bluegrass form. For me, they were all the same. Bluegrass, Celtic music. It was just different uh, angles of the same room, you know. When I started to play with us, I was 15, 16. I discovered that music and it was like an amazing shock for me. I, it, this is where I wanted to be. I love bluegrass. I was fully immersed into that kind of music at that time. Denis Fon had this uh, bluegrass record store in near Montparnasse, where this was the only place in Paris where you could find some very, very hard to get records of that style of music. Uh, when Denis mentioned that you know Bill Keys was coming and we wanted to form a band, he asked me if I could join and everything. I was like thrilled, you know, I could not believe it. Where I first met Pierre, he was playing mandolin. And uh, when I first heard him play, I thought, there's something there. There's really something going on. And I just wanted to uh, witness the evolution, you know, uh, and to uh, play with him. And good ideas to rub off in both directions, you know. Uh, I could learn something from Pierre, too. What I liked about Bill was that he came from a background of a, a real music lover. He was interested by classical musicians, by world music musicians, by uh, jazz musicians. He introduced me to Duke Ellington, to Charlie Mingus. I will never forget. I will never forget the first time I heard Good Back Pop by Hat by John McLaughlin. Changed my life completely. <laughs> we played that song together with Bill Caravan. What is it? Caravan, the Duke Ellington tune. And this is when bluegrass started to, to sort of go away from my life, you know. I think there's definitely been an evolution and uh, as I first knew Pierre he was a mandolin player and then I realized he played guitar and we did some stuff on the guitar together but he was still using the, uh, the traditional guitar tuning also at that point. And I think the big change came when he uh, started using the dadgad uh, tuning. I knew that uh, blues musicians who were tuning their guitars differently. So I looked into that, and it was mostly major or minor chords open, which means that without the help of your uh, left hand fingers, you could uh, just, with open strings, get already an amazing color. I started to do all, all kinds of experiments, you know, like, oh, what I, I do that? And then I found this one. Dad Gad, from, from bass to treble strings, D, A, D. G, A, D. A in standard tuning would be here. A major. In that gad. I think what, what's amazing with that gad is this, the fact that this bass is down one step, which makes it really, you know, very attractive. So 
because we are tuned down one step on three strings, we do have to compensate by wider stretching, which for some people is a big issue, you know. It was a big issue for me, but maybe because I come from the piano background, I had a, a better, better luck with stretching, but it was really difficult at the beginning. I'm saying this so that people don't think that they can, because it's difficult, they cannot succeed, they have to work at it. At that time, it was, we're talking like 1973, something like that. I was very much immersed into folk music and into uh, Celtic music, and it was a tuning which was so suited to play that kind of music. Like, you know, you could do a, a drone going and dedicate your attention to the melody, like. of Algeria in a family who lost everything they own. They had to regain, to redo their life in France after, you know, Jewish people spent five, six, seven hundred years in Algeria long before the French colonized it. to music coming from all the cultures from the world is already a sign of recognition that I'm not alone, I'm not the center, France is not the center, I belong to a human chain of people and I'm very much aware, I want to see what people do, how they think and how do they perceive politics in their environment. This is important for me and I think music is also in a way a sort of political stance, you know, you want things to change. It must have a connotation of something which is actively uh, transforming myself and hopefully the people I play for. It has to be challenging, it has to get the people to think a way or another, you know, to think, just to think. Thank you. 